But a man, a woman of bad, of evil intentions, God will condemn. That's why it's so important that we understand what, what is our intention. What do we set out to do every morning that we get up? What, 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 what is our intention today? Is, is it to honor God? Is it to, to thank him for uh, another day to see light? Or is it just to get up and go about our business as usual? I don't know how many of you are giving morning and thank God for getting you up or uh, ask God to direct your path. And I don't know if that even important to you. But it troubles me when I see people of God carrying themselves in a way that is unpleasant with God. The Bible says, make haste. Make haste. To be with the Lord. Peter said, it's just good to be here. It's good to just be in the house of God. I can't wait to get there. You get me up, Lord, and you, you, you I look around and my son, my daughters, and, and my family's all safe, and I, I got food on my table. I got clothes on my back. I got a roof on my head. I, I'm in a soft bed. Uh, uh, I can get out the bed. On my own, is never put my clothes on. I, I'm just, I got to get out of here and go and praise you. Uh, and, 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 and let me get to the church because at the local church, I got sisters and brothers and, 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 and nephews and nieces and, 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 and people of God waiting. To, and when I get to see them and see that their home is good, their family is safe, they'll be in Oh, what a job of time we're going to have. In God's house. That's what it should be like. It shouldn't be like you driving here just to be doing something. It shouldn't be that solemnness and that sadness to come to the house of the Lord. You should be coming and say that God's face shine on you this morning and you beheld his glory and you got up out of sleep and you began to live another day. That's what it should be like on a Sunday morning. Yeah. I can't wait to see Sister Cope. I can't wait to see the kids. I can't wait to see them to see what joy it is with Kim. I can't wait to see Kim and the little girl. Because I ain't saw her in a long time. So it, it, it done my heart good to see my little niece running across the floor. It let me know that God is still merciful on their lives. Got to, we could have gotten the report that this morning Pastor Butler went on the glory. This morning Sister Butler went on the glory. We could have been hearing about that there's somebody here went on the glory, but God saw fit to keep us all here one more day to say hello. How you doing, God? Bless you. Yeah. How you should be to get up and come to God's house. Be on time. Be ready to go. Be pumped up. Be excited about what God is doing. No, the Lord said, no, I know you pronounced that. <laughs> what did I do? Not this time, but no. So relax. No, I have found favor in you, and therefore I want to I want to do something special. Let me see. When God finds favor with you, He also gives you expectation. Yeah. All right. He doesn't have favor with you for nothing. He wants you to do something so He can bless you. See, favor just gets him your attention. Favor that God sees you, but now He wants to bless you, so He'll say, "Go do this in." And once you do that, God says, "Because you done what I told you, and I found favor, I'm going to bless you now." See, a lot of us think blessing it means to get stuff. It doesn't mean to get stuff. It means to do stuff. Right. It means to 
to do what God says. It means to walk in obedience to God. Because God has put faith on you when he got you up this morning. That's the faith. Everybody didn't get up this morning. Praise God. And a lot of folks that talking right now have been written off. That folks down as we speak. Everybody not going to rise this morning, but because you did, God's face saw you and he saw favor in you and said, I'm going to work there one more day. But he don't work us up for nothing. He work us up to put an expectation that I'm going to tell her that I want her to go to church. I want to be a secretary, do a job. And she said, yes, Lord. And come to church and find you something. He said, the Lord has started my hand. So if I'm called by God to do something, I got to start doing something with my hand. God favor and, and he established our hands to do work that he orders us to do. No, I want you to build an ark. And I want you to build it just like this. Let me give you the instructions. No, I want you to do it just like that. This high, this wide, this long, this wood, this lumber, this wax, this blue, everything prescribed by God so Noah knew exactly what to do. The only, the, the only thing Noah had to do now is obey God. Go find the rum he said go find. Go get the glue he said go get. Get the nail he said you. Get the lump he said you. And the father instructed, bit it so high, wow. and he said you are blessed because you obeyed my expectation for your life. But look what he was saying. But the people said, oh, no, you got to be crazy. Who do you know build a ship on dry land? Everybody know you cannot, you do not build ships on dry land. But God is miraculous. Yes, yes. God is miraculous. Yes, yes, yes. So he built that ship on dry land. He said, no, I'm going to find favor not only in you, but in your entire family. Your wife, your three sons and their wife, eight people were saved from the first world flood because Noah found favor with God. Esther, where are you, Esther? The king found favor in Esther. And because she was so beautiful, he found favor in her, not because she was beautiful, because she had character. She had character. She's a woman of virtue, a woman of character, who loved her people. But it was through the king's favor with her that she saved the entire nation of the Jewish people. Because of her favor. I want this church to know that favor is necessary before a blessing can overflow you. You must stand before God and God must look out of heaven and see a need to keep using you for his glory. You're not here for you. You're here for God. We're not here for us. We are here for God. Our job is to glorify in God. Not to make a living. That's not your role. Because God already knows what you need when you ask that. He will provide for you. He said, I will provide all these things in the name of my son Jesus. There is nothing you need that God can't give you. But he wants you to be found favor with him. He wants to see you, Mary, see you, and send an angel down and tell you, Mary, be not afraid. The Lord God has found favor in you. See, I want God to find favor with me. I want 
him to find favor, to tell me what I need to do next. Unlike most leaders, I am industrious. I want to stay busy. I love to stay busy for God. Bless the work of my hands, O Lord. Let me be found favor in thy sight. That's what we do. And when you leave that one Sunday morning, you'll be shocked the next Sunday. Because you'll never come here and nothing the same. Because God found favor. And he is stabbing my hands. To do things that I've never had done before. Because he sees favor. And when you establish that relation with God, then God will have to bless you because he is a God that will bless those who walk circumspectly in his will and in his way and in his path, and he will never forget because God is God that cannot forget me. And he will not forget me. So he said to Abraham, Abraham, I'm going to call you my friend because I have found favor in you. I'm going to ask you to leave your father's house. And I'm going to ask you to go to a land that I'll tell you when you get there. In other words, he said, Abraham, I want you simply to obey me. Just do what I ask you. Don't worry about the outcome of it. Don't worry about what's going to happen. Just be faithful in following my direction. Abraham uh, took his wife, Sarah, left, left the home of their father, went out to a land that didn't know where we were going. But he trusted God. He trusted God. At a hundred years old, God promised him a, a, a seed. Sarah being 90, Abraham being a hundred, she gets pregnant with, with Isaac, have a child. Yeah. I got three more years ago, praise the Lord. <laughs> The whole idea is that she have a son, the son from the air, and, and then God tell Abraham, Abraham, I will you take your only son. Trust me with this. Take your only son and offer him up on Mount Tamar. And Abraham got early that morning, not knowing what the outcome was going to be like, took his son Isaac, took his servants. And they all headed out toward this mountain. And when he got to the foot, he told his servant, stay right here, because me and this boy are going up, and me and this boy are going to come right back down. <laughs> and they went up the mountain. Isaac playing around there, having a fun, fun time with his dad. He said, Dad, I got to ask you a question now while I'm doing the James Brown. He said, who, who shall be the sacrifice? <laughs> <laughs> and, and Abraham looked at his son doing that last move. He said, You only need. He said, Son, my God will provide. That's all he can say. And they got to the to the altar. Abraham took his son, laid him on the altar. Tied him down with a, with a rope around the altar. He finished set, he, he finished, he reached in his pocket and got his knife and gave it to kill his only son. And God stayed his hand. He said, Abraham, look over. Yes. There's a ram coming in the stick. Yes. Go over there and loose this ram, and he shall be the sacrifice. Amen. Abraham performed God's 
will. He says, Abraham, you are now called my friend. I wonder what we are taught. I wonder what God is calling us. I wonder do our, our obedience to God make us stand out to God? Why did God look down in heaven and earth and see these people? I don't know people like you and I. Why did he look down and find Mary and Abraham and, 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 and Noah and all these men and women of God, Esther? Why can't he do the same thing for us? Why can't he use you? He still needs to use somebody. He said that the harvest is plentiful, but the labors are few. He said, I would that somebody go to work. God said, I would that somebody would go to work. So why is it that God cannot find an Esther in this generation? A Noah, a prophet, a, a, a leader, a Dr. King. Why can't he find? Because everybody is tended to be caught in their own way. And your way is not God's way. Therefore, your thoughts are not God's thoughts. And therefore, you cannot walk in God's path if you're not thinking like God thinks. So your favor is limited. These, there were 10 levels, and I told there were 10 levels one day. They all came to Jesus and said to him, heal us. And he said to them, go your way and show thyself unto the priest. And these ten led to turn from Jesus and went down the road toward the, toward the synagogue. And as they walked in the road, they, they, their leprosy fell off of them. He shows faith. But here's the catch. When they, when they all looked around and saw that they were clean of the leprosy, only one came back and said to Jesus, thank you. Thank you for healing me. What happened to the other nine? They were ungrateful. Are we a nation that's ungrateful? Are we so are we so well off that we don't need to pray no more? Are we doing so well that we don't need to humble ourselves? Are we doing so so good that we can just live like we want to, give it morning and and and, 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 and expect to have two breasts, two plates, better yet, have teeth to even breast. What is this about us that? that make God not see nothing in us. And he looked down and every morning God, God do, a, do a scan of the earth. Every morning he scanned the earth to see who can he choose this day to do his will. We should know that God is looking for Someone. We should be putting our hands up like in class. If you know the answer, you can't make that joke put his hand out. If you know that you are a candidate for God's favor, raise your hand up so God can look down from heaven and see that you are willing. To be used today to do something spectacular that would change the lives of so many other people. Hold your hand up and let God know you're not ashamed to say, Here I am. Here I am, use me. See, we got to understand this. God's favor 
It's necessary. Because God got to see you doing something to use you to do something for him. Someone asked me the other day, well, well, what is my talent? I said, whatever you desire to do, and you do it good, that's your talent. But having a talent is not good enough. The talent must be sanctified by God to become a blessing, a gift. What do, what, what do you do in life? What is it about you that you deserve the right to live today? What is it that makes you, why did God choose choose me? Why did God choose you to stay alive? I'm, all the folks down the line, why are you? Why are me? Why are we still here? That gotta be a that gotta be a question in your mind. Why are you here doing nothing with your life? God wanna use us, but he gotta look down and see. Babies and know that he can trust us to do what he needs for us to do in order we may be blessed by him. That's why his son Jesus, you know, when if you really get down to it, in the second dispensation of time. God looked around trying to find somebody to start this world over and couldn't find anybody worthy of coming down to start over. And God decided to reincarnate his own self and step down for two generations to save us. Because there was nobody worthy to step down on our behalf. So it is today. God is looking for someone to be, someone to be an example, someone to change the lives of so many other people. And God is still having a hard time finding that fit the meaning that Abraham was asked to find. Forty couldn't find forty, couldn't find eight, eight couldn't find ten. God had destroyed the cities because there were not 10 million found worthy to intercede for God. How many are found worthy today? What is your intention? You intend to serve God with all your heart and all your soul, and you intend to serve God like you want to. It's good up to you. But God is waiting on you. To make your mind up. Amen. Amen. Give God a hand clap for you. God bless you. Thank you, Father, for this day. We thank you so much for the word. We thank you so much for the encouragement to know that I can raise my hand and I can say, Here I am, Lord. I may not be, be worthy, but I'm, 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 but I'm ready. I'm ready to try to do what you ask me to do. I didn't need your help. I need your guidance. I need your strength. But if I'm with it, to line up in the line of, of those doers and not the line of those undoers. Show me how to how to be a servant. Show me how to serve you only. And then how to serve one another. How to be glad to be a servant. How to be glad to be a helpmate to, to the world. Then in the helping hand of those that need a helping hand. Feed those that need feed. Throw those that need throw. Whatever it is for us to do, Lord. We gladly accept that responsibility. And we thank you so much for being a being choosing us this morning to be alive and well. And we thank you so much in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. God bless you today. Amen. 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 Hey, give our hands up, please.